So, this is the ASUS Republic of Gamers Ally, and I've spent the last 4 months with it, using it as a primary gaming PC on a daily basis, and I want to share some thoughts on this device, and how it's been holding up so far. So, this will be an outsider's perspective, since I'm not a console gamer. That means I don't have the expectations that console gamers may have coming in, such as streamlined experience and quick resumes from sleep. PC games and systems can be a little more finicky, but I'm so used to that. At $700 for this model, it's a little more expensive than the Steam Deck, but you do get a lot more horsepower, so it looks fair in my opinion. In the box, you get a 65 watt AC adapter with a Type-C hat, and you get the cardboard stand. It gets dirty very quickly. Ever since the Nintendo Switch came out, I've always looked on an Envy while people got their hands on it, but I never got to grabbing one myself thanks to Nintendo's ecosystem. Then the Steam Deck came out, and I've been watching the portable gaming PC space with mounting interest. And when the ASUS RG Ally finally came out in the mid-2030, I consumed review videos of it voraciously since it was much more powerful than the Steam Deck, and it was Windows, meaning you're pretty much free to do anything on it. So after much deliberation, I got myself one last October, and now, after having spent months with it, after the honeymoon phase has worn off, it feels like I can see it in a more objective light and share my thoughts, so that hopefully if you wish to get one yourself, help you decide whether it's worth considering or look elsewhere. Let's start with the hardware and the build itself. Now, the Ally is made of plastic, but it feels pretty great in the hand. Grippy and balanced, it doesn't feel cheap at all. I love how it feels reassuring, especially with the angular shape that fits your palm, though this could be subjective. I know the Steam Deck has a better fit in the hand. Oh, and this is where you'll catch dirt and grime as time goes by, keep that in mind. When it comes to ports, you get the usual headphone jack, the infamous micro SD card slot, more on that later. Then you have a USB-C port that's built into the XG Mobile GPU port that you can use to attach an ASUS proprietary external GPU. That's really it. You have the volume rocker and the power button which acts as a fingerprint reader. The button layout is similar to an Xbox controller. They feel decent, but I've seen other reviewers saying their buttons can sometimes get stuck. I haven't had any issues. Time will tell, I guess. You have the menu button and another button that brings up the ASUS Armory Crate software on the right side of the screen and view button with the command center button on the left side. The command center button is quite handy for tweaking system settings on the fly. The Ally also offers feedback and vibration depending on the game. On the front, you get a set of speakers that sound surprisingly loud for such a small device and hats off to ASUS engineers for pulling that off. You get the big, vibrant 7-inch Full HD IPS screen, front and center, with a refresh rate of 120Hz. In my 4 months of toting it around in my backpack with other devices, it's never had any noticeable scratches on the screen. The brightness of 500 nits is okay if you're playing games under cloudy conditions. What annoys me occasionally is the fact that it's a bit reflective, so you might want to get a matte screen protector. The size of it is hardly pocketable, but it's not bad, all things considered. You know, the Steam Deck and Legion Go are both bigger and chunkier, but it's nowhere close to a Nintendo Switch. You can lug it around in a backpack all day. Playing games all day though, that's an entirely different matter. So, what's it like to actually use the Ally and play games? Let's address the elephant in the room first, it's Windows 11. It's hardly amazing to interact through the touchscreen, but I've grown accustomed to it and it'll do the job. Since I grew up with Windows, it's fine. ASUS offers their Armory Crate and Command Center suite to help keep it touch friendly and I gotta command their dedication and support for the most part, and delivering performance and software updates fairly frequently. Recently they also sent a new patch that enabled the gyro. Personally, I rarely use the Armory Crate. I just launch games straight from the desktop and that's it. So unplugged from the adapter, the Ally offers you three power settings. The 10 watt silent mode, 15 watts performance mode, and 25 watts turbo mode, with the option to add your own custom mode as well. As you can guess, the higher the wattage, the more power it consumes and the shorter battery life you will get. And it also heats up, so keep that in mind. 
The heat can be felt directly on the display since the processor is so close. In my experience, older games, 2D or indie games can easily run smoothly on 10 watt silent mode, with a bit more demanding 3D games giving a good experience at 15 watts. If you want to run the latest and the greatest, better turn off the turbo mode and let it chew through the battery. I got about an hour of playtime with the turbo mode before the ally ran out of battery. Generally, I can get 2 to 3 hours of light and medium gaming. I really appreciate that there is a 65 watt charger because that charges your device pretty quickly. And when you're plugged in through that charger, you get a turbo mode of 30 watts. That's the mode I usually use to play the most demanding games. Now let's talk frame rates. It feels like Li and PC handhelds in general are great for those of us who don't mind tweaking and playing around with the settings. If you need more frame rates, lower the graphics settings, turn on AMD FSR, up the wattage, lower the resolution to 720p. I mean, on a 7 inch screen, it looks pretty good. For me, 30 FPS is fine, so no complaints. Even AAA titles from a couple of years ago, I can run them at medium to high settings and still keep 30 FPS. If you want 60, just turn on the settings a bit. It also depends on the optimization, of course. Some games are just poorly optimized at the time of this writing. But if you enjoy indie games, it'll be a breeze. But if you're eyeing the ally, why would you just play indie games? With such power, it's basically a little desktop in your pocket. Well, not literally, since it won't fit in a typical pocket, but it's powerful enough to handle fairly demanding workloads. Just for kicks, I've tried video editing and music production on this thing and it's pretty impressive. So yeah, you can upgrade the storage, get a bigger SSD, get a proper dock like the JSOX and turn this into the centerpiece of your workstation. I want to try that later down the line. But while we're on storage, I need to address one major sin of the ally, the micro SD card slot. Yes, it's true, it's an engineering flaw. Despite all my precautions, the card slot died a few months in. I doubt software updates can fix that. Luckily, it's not a deal breaker for me and my warranty is still valid, but you should keep that in mind. For the whole package at around $700, less if you can find a good deal, it's really powerful if you ask me. I skipped the Steam Deck for its limiting OS and lackluster processor. I almost got the Legion Go, but the attachment of the controls seemed questionable, especially long term. The Ally is great for my use case, I mean, playing Resident Evil 4 Remake or Assassin's Creed Odyssey in bed is exactly what I wished for, AAA games in the palm of your hand. And the Ally almost meets the expectation. I say almost because the lackluster battery life keeps me a bit anxious. If you can manage your expectations and play it on battery on short bursts, you can find a pretty enjoyable time in that happy medium of needing to charge and playing while charging. And that's how I settled into my routine and had a very enjoyable time playing games during breaks between work, through the day, and then sitting down in front of the monitor, plugging it in for more immersive game mode at night. So that's how I settled in and it went great until it wasn't. So a couple months in, Windows Update completely trashed my ally. Worse, the ASUS Recovery Cloud software was so slow. I guess it's the regional servers that are slow? If anyone has experienced something like that, let me know in the comments below. Because I downloaded whatever is needed to restore the device to its original state, and it moved single digits in the span of 4 hours. In the end, I reinstalled Windows manually and downloaded drivers and everything by myself. So yeah, that was one thing that really soured my experience. So at the end of the day, the ASUS RJ Ally is filled to the brim with amazing performance for its size and thoughtful tweaks and details that enhance her mobile gaming experience. And I love this despite the compromises. You can practically do anything you want with it. You're not limited to any ecosystem or some platform. Hell, you can boot up Linux on it if you want. If you can ignore the shortcomings of Windows 11 and its somewhat clunky ways, this is a great device. It has more than enough performance and if you want more, ASUS is willing to sell you an external GPU you can attach to it using the port on top, though it's really expensive. So a few cons I want to put out there after mostly praising the thing. Since this is a Windows device, you can't just put it to sleep during a game and come back later and expect it to pick up where you left off. 
my attempt at that crashed the game I was playing, so that's one of the downsides I guess. And I found that it has a strange bug that makes their RGB light rings around the sticks turn on randomly at times, even when I've shut them off. Also they will occasionally blast you when you're charging it on sleep, pretty annoying when you're trying to take a nap yourself. The micro SD card issue is a major flaw if you need it. The middling battery life will keep you close to an outlet if you're playing demanding games. If you're planning to take it out on a trip, better bring a good power bank. But considering the space they've had to work with, I'm happy to live with that compromise. So, I hope you found the video informative, especially if you're considering on getting one. It's a great little beast, and despite its flaws, I love it. I'm thinking of getting a protective case soon, so if you know a really good one, just leave me a recommendation below. Thanks, and till next time.